Or just, just have to endure it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times actors roasted their own movies. So do you have any regrets? <laughs> Garfield, maybe. For this list, we'll be looking at times when actors publicly mocked or otherwise criticized films they had appeared in. Which of these movies deserves to be roasted the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Christopher Plummer, The Sound of Music Perhaps just searching for a reason to stay. The Sound of Music won the Best Picture Oscar and is considered by many to be one of the best musicals of all time. However, one of its stars wasn't quite so smitten with the film. The late Christopher Plummer, who played Captain Von Trapp, derided The Sound of Music on numerous occasions. You look happy to me. He would even refer to it as the sound of mucus. Plummer found the movie overly sentimental and his character underdeveloped. He also seemed to resent its popularity, saying it followed him around like an albatross. You flatter me, Captain. Oh, how clumsy of me. I meant to accuse you. However, he was able to come around on the movie. In his memoir, Plummer says he realized the movie's best qualities, and in 2015, he was present at the 50th anniversary screening. It was your film and you drove it. And I didn't know I was doing it. And I didn't want to have anything to do with it. <laughs> yes, you did. Not then, but you are glad now, I think. Yes, I am. I yeah. am. Number 9. Brad Pitt, The Devil's Own Plenty of actors have criticized their work, but they usually wait until after the movie has come out. And they don't usually go as extreme as Brad Pitt did with this action thriller about an Irish Republican army member who comes to the U.S. trying to obtain black market weapons. No one's innocent in the situation. Everyone has their ghosts. Script and production problems hurt the film, and Pitt even threatened to quit while shooting. In an interview with Newsweek shortly before its release, Pitt called it, quote, the most irresponsible bit of filmmaking he'd ever seen. Just what do you think you're doing? Pitt later issued a statement indicating his remarks had been taken out of context. And in 2011, he said he really liked the film, but acknowledged it could have been better. Now that's growth. I'm sorry. Never meant for this to happen. Just... Number 8. Mark Wahlberg, The Happening Some M. Night Shyamalan movies are really good. Some are like The Happening, a thriller that's funnier than some actual comedies. Could this really be happening? After The Happening was released to terrible reviews from both critics and audiences, you can't blame its star for being a little embarrassed. What? No! When speaking about it in 2010, Wahlberg referred to The Happening as, quote, a really bad movie, and said his fighter co-star Amy Adams, quote, dodged the bullet by not getting cast. Shyamalan didn't take Wahlberg's criticism to heart, saying the actor could interpret the movie however he wanted to. Oh, that's okay. Number 7. Lindsay Lohan, I Know Who Killed Me in the 2000s, Lindsay Lohan skyrocketed up the A-list and quickly crashed down. You okay? Yeah. Got me. One factor was her personal issues, another was her making low-quality movies like I Know Who Killed Me, a psychological horror movie that became one of the few movies to receive an F rating from Cinema Score. No, I... I want to quit. And Lohan would probably give it the same grade. In 2013, a fan tweeted at Lohan, telling her she had watched I Know Who Killed Me twice the previous night. You know, you're wasting your time. Lohan gave a hilarious response, quote, two times too many. At least we know that nobody killed Lohan's sense of humor. Number six, Jamie Foxx, Stealth. The same year he won an Oscar for playing Ray Charles, Jamie Foxx starred in a movie better suited for the Razzies. What? Well, well, well. Stealth, a sci-fi action thriller about a military artificial intelligence program that goes rogue, was one of 2005's biggest flops, both critically and commercially. And Fox wasn't satisfied with how it turned out either. But if you make me, I will blast your error elastic ass right out the sky. Speaking to Hollywood.com in 2007, Fox said stealth was not up to par. He also said he regretted having to speak highly of the film when promoting its release. But you don't win an Oscar without knowing how to fudge the truth. What? You know what? 
Take it easy, easy. Nothing's happened. Number five, Halle Berry, Catwoman. Halle Berry is one of the few actors to enjoy the distinct honor of winning both an Oscar and a Razzie, taking home the Worst Actress trophy for this comic book flop. Catnip. And by that, we mean Barry literally showed up in person at the ceremony to accept the award and delivered a hilarious and biting speech. You know, it was just what my career needed, you know? I was at the top, and then Catwoman just plummeted me to the bottom. Love it. It's hard being on top. It's much better being on the bottom. In it, Barry thanked studio Warner Brothers for putting her in a, quote, god-awful movie and joked about the possible career setback it posed. We never want to see Catwoman again, but we'll gladly rewatch Barry's acceptance speech over and over again. It was me you flushed down the pipes. Number four, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Red Sonja. It wasn't just the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger's muscles that made him a star. It was also his charisma and the quality of his best projects. If you yield only to a conqueror, then prepare to be conquered. But no amount of charisma could save this ridiculous fantasy based on the Red Sonja comic book character. Schwarzenegger is no great fan of the film, once referring to it as, quote, the worst film he's ever made. He also joked that he would tell his kids they'd have to watch it 10 times in a row if they misbehaved. That's logic. Surely having to watch Red Sonja even once is punishment enough. Try it. Number three, Katherine Heigl, Knocked Up. An in-depth interview is a chance for an actor to really dig into their work and bring up issues they might have had with certain roles. Really? <laughs> I know, I was so surprised, too. In an interview with Vanity Fair about this Judd Apatow comedy, star Katherine Heigl expressed some discomfort with the film, calling it, quote, a little sexist. I might say Titan. Tight. A little... Tighter. Heigl's main issue appeared to be with how uptight the female characters were compared to the male ones. Heigl's comments sparked further discussions, with Apatow and co-star Seth Rogen expressing some issues with her phrasing. After the interview, Heigl stressed that she enjoyed working on the film and later expressed her, quote, love and respect for Rogen. At least there are no hard feelings. We didn't mean to do this together, okay? And, and we tried to make it work, and that was good, I suppose. Number two, Sylvester Stallone. Stop or my mom will shoot. Sylvester Stallone has starred in many bad movies, but this unfunny cop comedy is a different kind of terrible. Don't do that, Joe. Joe, be careful. Don't do anything foolish. Stallone didn't just say it was his worst movie. He also said it was, quote, maybe one of the worst films in the entire solar system. I've had it. I've really had it. I'm dead now. He was apparently tricked into starring in the film by fellow action star Arnold Schwarzenegger. In 2017, Schwarzenegger said he pretended to be interested in Stop so that Stallone would want to take it instead. Schwarzenegger's scheme worked, but Stallone ended up a winner. Of another Golden Raspberry Award, that is. Gwen, what are you trying to do to me? This whole thing is just ridiculous. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Robert Pattinson, Twilight. Robert Pattinson's career is full of great performances in great films, but he doesn't seem to have much love for the series that made him a star. In numerous interviews about the vampire romance movies, Pattinson has mocked the writing of Twilight author Stephanie Meyer, as well as the plot holes in the script. Say it. Out loud. Say it. He even said Meyer's first Twilight book read like, quote, a book that shouldn't have been published. Pattinson's disdain for the series seemed to grow the further on it went, but his candidness increased his charisma significantly. I was trying to think of an analogy earlier. I was thinking like, you know, it's something about some guy if he says like, listen, I'm gonna kill you. It's something really attractive about that. I was like, yeah, I mean, I really can't see it. And since he helped the Twilight Saga gross billions, we doubt the studio minded too much. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.